Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right But he gets in sticky messes just the same He's curious and speaks his mind But trouble's never far behind It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind I'm Paddington Bear Dear Aunt Lucy Yesterday, I went to the seaside for the first time. I was very excited, as I'd always wondered what it was like. Mr. Brown took me out and bought me a new sun hat, especially for the occasion. The lady at the shop told me that sun hats can be worn many different ways. It was up to me to find the style that suited me best. No, that's not it either. No. Uh, come on, Paddington. I'll trust you to keep us all waiting. Come on. That's it. What are we waiting for? Hmm. Ah, don't you just love car trips? It's all right for some. How about opening the windows, everyone? It'll blow the cobwebs away. Cobwebs. My hat! Perhaps opening the windows wasn't such a good idea, Henry. Thank you. I suggest from now on we keep the windows closed. We're almost there now. Perhaps we should open the windows again, dear. Only if Paddington promises to hold on to his hat. We're holding! We're holding! <sighs> Can you smell that fresh sea air? It smells like salt. Sand, rotting fish. Lunch. Some bears can smell more than is good for them. Mr. Brown said we'd just pop into a shop to get a few things I needed for the beach. It certainly seemed like a lot of things. <gasps> if only Aunt Lucy could see me now. But going to the seaside isn't easy. It's no wonder there aren't many people here. <sighs> Let's have a competition. We'll each build a sand castle, then Mary and Mrs. Bird can judge the best. I'm sure I'll win. Oh, no, you won't, because I'm going to win. Oh, don't bet on it. It could be me. <laughs> Wait for me. <sighs> I needed to find a place with lots of room. The only castles I'd ever seen needed a lot of space. Just like in the storybooks Aunt Lucy read to me. <sighs> this looks like Paddington's hat. <gasps> it is Paddington's hat. But where is Paddington? Paddington? My sandcastle had become too big. I had to push it back to land before it was washed away. I was beginning to get seasick. It was worse than when I came over on the boat from Peru. 
them all wet. Wet? Uh-oh. I think I'm in trouble again. Help! Nothing. I've searched from one end of the beach to the other. Oh, dear. Where on earth can he be? We'd better find a lifeguard. I must have been floating out here for ages. It's a good job I came prepared for an emergency. Uh-oh. The situation did not look good. And as much as I don't like to share my marmalade sandwiches, it was time to make an exception. Judging by the weight of this threat, we've got ourselves a major catch. Help! Let me down. This is worse than a bad dream. It's a nightmare. Here! It's a bear! Good afternoon. My name's Paddington Brown. I'm sorry I can't raise my hat, but I've lost it. Besides, I'm stuck. Don't move. You'll only make it worse. We'll soon have you clear. So where did you spring from? Darkest Peru. Darkest Peru? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good laugh. Peru's thousands of miles from here. I know. It was a very long journey. You must be tired out. <laughs> Not at all. I've just had a good nap. Ah, that's better. Thank you for picking me up. With a bit of luck, I may be back in time for tea. <laughs> Poor Paddington. Goodness knows how long he's been gone, and I'm sure he can't swim. We'll get a search party out there right away. It's a miracle. They say it's a bear from Darkus Peru. Paddington? Paddington, over here. This will make the front page. I can see the headline now. Hey, Paddington, what did you do for food? Eat plankton? Raw fish? No. Marmalade. Marmalade? Marmalade. Paddington! Oh, Paddington, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Um, I think you lost this. We'd better get you back home. You mean to Peru? What a story! The catch of the season, all the way from darkest Peru. Lone Bear's epic tale. <laughs> oh, Paddington, whatever will you get up to next, my sobrino? Mr. Gruber and I were off to Egypt, land of the pharaohs, the sphinx, and the pyramids. Whatever they are. Driver, slow down! Slow down! Yes, please do! Oh, no, sir! You see, in Cairo, if you drive slow, that is when you might have an accident. No, please hold on for a moment. We have arrived. As you say, safe and sound. Only bears. Tourists, see? And that means there's easy money to be made. <laughs> I wait here for you, yes? No, thank you. We have had quite enough driving for one day. Wait! I am best guide in all Cairo. I, I show you so you don't get lost. Would you like to look for some souvenirs before we visit the pyramids? We may come across some bargains. Oh, yes, please, Mr. Gruber. Bears are good at finding bargains. And I would recommend keeping your paws on your money. I've heard there are a great many unsavory characters around. Now, Mr. Brown, stay close. It's like a maze in these alleys, and I wouldn't want you to get lost. Don't worry, Mr. Gruber. That's something else bears are good at. Not getting lost. Ah, you look like a bear who needs a carpet. No, thank you. <gasps> but where's Mr. Gruber? Mr. Gruber! Mr. Gruber! Mr. Brown! Oh, dear. He's lost. Ah, there you are! Wait! I show you around! 
<laughs> oh dear. I think perhaps I am lost after all. I see you have lost your way. I know someone who can help you. Madame Valassier, fortune teller extraordinaire. Oh, thank you. With pleasure. Madame Valassier will be with you in a moment. Good afternoon. I'm Paddington Brown. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Valassier. Ah, to help you find your way. Madame Valassier's fortunes cost one pound. A pound? I could buy a map for that. Ah, but to find your way, you must know where you are coming from. And only I can tell you that. Can you see Mr. Gruber in there? Mr. Gruber? Who is this Mr. Gruber? He's my best friend. He takes me all over the world. He's going to write a book called The World and Its Wonders. That's why we've come to Egypt. This Mr. Gruber is very generous. One day you would like to repay him for his kindness, no? Yes. I was hoping I might find something in the market. Something special. Like? Well, he likes anything old, and he's very keen on pyramids. But I'm not sure what they are. Ah, I see that today you will find two things. A perfect gift for your friend, and your friend. How will I do that? Do not worry. The gift and your friend will find you. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Valassier. Yoo-hoo! Mr. Bear! Mrs. Valassia didn't say anything about meeting that dangerous taxi driver again, and I wanted to do everything right. Now all I could do was wait and see if what the fortune teller predicted would come true. Ah! You look like a bear who's wanting a gift for his best friend. Amazing! Ah, there's Mr. Brown! And there he goes! Aha! Uh -huh. Please, follow that scooter, and hurry! Whoa. What is that? For the right price, your very own pyramid. Really? How much does it cost? How much you got? Three pounds, fifty piastres. Gee, it's, it's a miracle. It was foretold. That's what Mrs. Valassia said. P that is the only pyramid I have left. And it just happens to be three pounds and fifty piastres. I'll take it. And please, could I have it gift-wrapped and sent to 32 Windsor Gardens in London? Otherwise, it won't be a surprise. Mr. Gruber won't be able to believe his eyes. And I can't believe mine. It's the other half of my fortune coming true. What a good thing I've found you, Mr. Brown. Now perhaps we should visit the pyramids. We shall have to hurry. There aren't many left. There is no need to hurry. No one is going to make off with them. Why, each stone weighs over two and a half tons. There are nearly two and a half million of them. How will the postman deliver that to 32 Windsor Gardens? Is anything the matter, Mr. Brown? I think I may have bought a pyramid by mistake, Mr. Gruber. But from whom? Who sold it to you? That man. I paid him three pounds and fifty piastres. It was all I had. Scoundrel! Stop! Charlatan! Thief! Swindler! Hurry! Drive away! Uh, I have found you. And we are glad you did. You helped catch this confidence trickster. Go away. Uh, no speak English. Uh... I would like you to give me my money back. Here. Wait. I have a better idea. I suggest you buy it back. Buy it back? Yes, for 20 pounds. I'm sure the police would agree that is a fair price. Here. We shall continue our tour, yes? On one condition. Perhaps this wasn't quite such a good idea, Mr. Gruber. Camels are nice, yes? In the pyramids. Very big, no? I don't think the postman would have been very pleased delivering it. I'm sure you are right about that, Mr. Brown.
there are a number of rules to observe when working with quick-drying cement. One is to work quickly. Another is to apply it evenly. And perhaps the most important rule of all... ...is not to stand in the stuff. Oh! Help! Fortunately, Mr. Gruber had a solution to my problem. Building a patio behind my shop was a wonderful idea of yours, Mr. Brown. It's Mrs. Bird you should thank. I got the idea from one of her magazines. Just look at all the pictures of things you can build. A fence with climbing roses. A rock garden. And look at the happy patio owner. I'm looking forward to that moment myself. Uh, but what we need first is a finishing touch. A finishing touch? Some sort of decoration. A je ne sais quoi. A je ne sais quoi. It means I'm not quite sure what. And neither did I. But I was determined to find out. And how is Mr. Gruber's patio coming along? Oh, it's all done, Mrs. Bird. All it needs now is a finishing touch. If only I knew what a finishing touch was. A finishing touch can be anything. A statue, a painting. Why, we have plenty of them around the house. Like this vase. If you look around the house, you might get an idea of what you need. Thank you, Mrs. Bird. I'm sure this vase will be just fine. <coughs> Perhaps Mr. Gruber would be better off with a finishing touch. He won't have to return at the end of the day. <laughs> so, I did a little research to find just the right finishing touch for Mr. Gruber's patio. And then I saw it. Adrian Crisp's garden ornaments. It was just the place I needed, and it had hardly taken me any time at all. <clears throat> ah, there you are. Yes, here I am. Finally. Now be sure it gets delivered right away. But I'm here to pick up a finishing touch for Mr. Gruber's patio. <gasps> Oh, why didn't you say so? Right up this way, please. As you can see, we have an exquisite selection of items to choose from. But these are all broken. Haven't you got anything in better condition? These are antiques. The signs of wear and tear make them all the more valuable. Whoops. Careful! These items are priceless! It's taken me years to amass my collection! Oh, really? If signs of wear and tear made these antiques all the more valuable, you would think a few more nicks and scratches would be good for business. It's been over an hour. Surely there must be something you like. Those lions look very interesting. Oh, I doubt you could manage those. They're 570 pounds. Really? They don't look that heavy. 570 pounds isn't their weight. That's their price. Ouch! Oh, 570 pounds. You could buy a real lion for that. Besides, I've only got 10 pence. 10 pence? Ouch! Well, I suppose I could let you have that piece of stonework over there. Oh. No, no, not that piece of stonework. That piece of stonework. But what is it? That is a very good bargain for ten pence. Now off you go before I change my mind. And in case you're wondering, no, you can't have it gift-wrapped. I couldn't wait to surprise Mr. Gruber. <gasps> After I boarded the bus, the strangest thing happened. I started to hear thunder. But there wasn't a cloud in the sky. 
Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. I believe this is yours. Oh dear, my finishing touch. thing before it no stop don't oh. good afternoon are you all right yes thank you but I'm very sorry about your stand. Sorry? Don't be sorry, pal. It's a hot day, trade's bad, and you've given me the first good idea I've had all day. Can you think of anything nicer on a hot day than a glass of freshly squeezed fruit juice? Two freshly squeezed glasses of fruit juice? Right in one. <laughs> As for that stone of yours, you can borrow my barrow if you like. Here's your finishing touch, Mr. Gruber. I'm not sure what it is. I don't think even Mr. Crisp knew. Do you know what? I suspect it may be an old Roman cocoa stand. A Roman cocoa stand? Well, perhaps not Roman, but it's certainly very old. And look, our mugs fit perfectly. I don't think anyone could find a better finishing touch than that, Mr. Brown. Not if they tried for a thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> 